It is so critical that you learn the most important things as early in your life as possible because everything that you don't know now, you will regret in the future. Today, I wanna share with you the five things that I wish I would have known in my 20s. Now, I wanna go ahead and tell you guys before we even get started with this, you know, I really made a very strong push to try to work really hard in my 20s. I tried to study, I tried to adjust, I made a lot of effort to be able to develop myself. So there are a lot of different life principles that I could have thrown in this video, but in being transparent about the things that I already knew in my 20s, these were five things that I really did not know or focus on enough and wanna be able to provide to you now. The very first thing that is super important for you to understand is that your social circle matters more than you think. Let me give you a basic story of how I came to know this more in my 30s. When I was growing up in South Central LA, I was one of those guys that would have friends up and down the block. We would hang out, play video games, do all sorts of things together, right? And I always was told by my mother growing up, that my life was gonna look a lot different than the people that were around me. But I never really paid attention to it. I just thought, oh, this is my mom. She's just trying to rain on my parade, spoil all the fun, give me a hard time. I didn't really take it very seriously. So I grew up with this mentality that regardless of who was in my social circle, I would always personally try to push myself to the next level, even if they were not trying to push themselves to theirs. And so, you know, I would go to school, I would study, and I would always have a kind of apprehension about really focusing on my circle as much as I should. The truth is this, you know, you've probably watched other videos of mine where I've told you that the app that you're going to become the average of the top five people that you spend most of your time with. If you're anything like I was in my 20s, you heard that statement and you knew that there was some truth to it, but you didn't fully buy in. You didn't go all the way with taking that statement literally. I want you to take this statement literally if you're trying to get something of value down from this video. I want you to think about every important thing that has led you to the person who you've become now in your life. Think about how you talk. Think about your personality. Think about how you process decisions and some of the biggest problems you've been faced with up until now. There's a 99.9% .9 chance that all of those things have been influenced by your social circle. Am I correct? The accent that you have comes from your social environment. The way that you have certain mannerisms has been learned to some extent by the people that are around you. Other people's ways rub off on you. And I know you think that you might have the willpower, the independence of thought to be some anomaly that just no matter who's around me, my family, my friends, my coworkers, whatever, I can still be my own person. I'm gonna tell you this now, your social circle matters more than you think. Because what happens is you bring people into your world, right? You have your own little mini world, your personal world. And whatever attributes are possessed by the people in that world shapes not only your personality and decision-making and values and standards and morals, it also colors in the lens at which you look at life. So for a lot of you guys, you're tuning to Black Men's Career because on some level, you're trying to find a black mentor that looks just like you, showing you how to get to the next level. But what if you grew up in a certain environment where everybody in your community felt that the only people that were successful were non-blacks? What if the people in your community always programmed you to think that the only way that you can become successful is if you cheat? 
or cut corners. See, if you had people that shaped your mind in such a negative way, not knowing that it was negative or hindering your success at the time, guess what? That colors in your entire perspective on life to such an extent you think the entire earth revolves around your own thoughts. So you think that everybody that's rich got there by deceit or everybody that's rich, you know, is white or another nationality, which would then mean that there's no way that you can be successful. Your social circle matters more than you think. OK, I'm just going to leave it at that, whether you're talking about finances, personal fitness, anything that is of substance in life, your spirituality you are going to be the average of that top five people. And one of the other things that I want to say on this is reading people is a must. Reading people is a skill that must be honed. I wish I would have known this at an earlier age. You know, I've always had uh, the gift of perception and not always doing a lot of talking, kind of sitting back and observing feeling people out without being, you know, extremely critical of them. But as I was reading people, I just thought that that was like some like unique thing for me. I never identified it as an art. I never looked at it as a skill. I never looked at it as a practice that must be possessed and refined in order to become more successful in life. And some of you guys might be saying, well, man, how did you not know that? That seems kind of like common sense, but I'll be the first one to tell you. Common sense is not always common practice. I would tell you that not only um, do you need to know how to be able to read people in order to become more successful, you also have to be able to read people and then modify your behavior based upon those perceptions. So I'm gonna give you an example. You know, uh, one of the things that I look out for a lot of times when I'm developing my social circle is the open and closed mindedness that they have as a person. You know, you got people that are very skeptical about everything in life, very cynical. You know, you got people that are like these conspiracy theorists, gurus at every turn. They're looking for, you know, what's the catch? And I cannot allow their mental viruses to infect me because if that be the case, then that's going to change my thought process on my own personal growth. You know, if I let somebody else weigh me down, I cannot reach my true potential. But me growing up, I always thought that because of the fact that I could read a person, I could know how to work around a person. The truth of the matter is wisdom would have taught me that if I could read a person and I understood where this person was coming from, if I'm seeing the writing on the wall, I should know altogether to avoid this person. I shouldn't try to take the ability to know how to read around a person just to be able to kind of maneuver. I should be able to make direct decisions based upon the exact personality of that person. And you have to do the exact same thing if you want to be successful in life. So, uh, for example, if you're working at a job and you can perceive that your boss is never going to give you an opportunity to move up at that job, then you have to modify your behavior and get another job. It gets to a point where you no longer say, well, you know, maybe if I try to impress my boss by doing this, maybe if I, you know, work 60 hours instead of 40 hours, then that's what's going to do the trick. Once you've read a person, that's when you have to modify it. They got a famous saying, the first time somebody shows you who they are, you've got to believe it. So reading people is a skill that must be honed, okay? The number two thing that I wish that I would have known in my 20s, is that persuasion is the number one skill that all successful entrepreneurs have. Let me show you how number two plays into number one. You know, in my community, the people that I grew up with and had in my social circle, the art of persuasion always had a negative context. There was always some negative connotation to it. Whenever somebody in my environment 
would hear the word persuasion, they would always think trickery. They would always think deceit. They would always think about getting one over on a person so that way you should feel socially ashamed. If you had any ounce of persuasion skills in your toolbox, and then I had to find, once I got around these multimillionaires, that all of them swear up and down by having persuasion in business. If you're gonna be successful in any business capacity, you have to know how to get other people on board with what it is that you're trying to do. And the only way that you can do that is to persuade. Now, persuasion is a tool that can be used for good and evil. It is not a evil thing in and of itself. But based upon where you grew up with, you could have a different mindset when it comes to that. And you could be totally discouraging yourself from anything that has to do with having the right capabilities to know how to influence the right people. One of the most legendary books in this world that's ever been written is a book called How to Win Friends and influence people. And again, in my community, this is one of those books, books that people would hear about and they would just kind of laugh it off and say, oh, only losers would read a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Only people that are so socially awkward, they don't know how to say, hi, how are you? How was your day? Would read such a book, right? A lot of times based upon our environments, we often try to shame people for trying to learn the skills of success because we glorify poverty on some level. We glorify ignorance on some level. I'm just giving you all real talk in today's video, okay? Persuasion is the number one skill that all entrepreneurs possess. So any training and any reading and any development and mentoring that you can be a part of that will show you how to be a more persuasive person in an ethical way is a time investment that is well worth your energy, okay? You're not going to be able to do anything significant in life without persuading another person because other people control the resources that you want. Whether you wanna be in a relationship with another person, you have to persuade them to be in a relationship with you. Whether you want to negotiate to get a job, you want to negotiate for the price of your house, you have to persuade other people to buy into what it is that you're offering. And again, if what you are doing is ethical, if what you are doing is not damaging to anyone else in a very malicious type of a way, then in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with persuasion. In fact, Real persuasion that is ethical is something that the other person wants because they want to be persuaded to do what it is that you're offering to them if it's to their benefit, right? Imagine right now you have cancer. I have the cure for it. Would you want me to persuade you to get the cure? Absolutely, <laughs> right? You wouldn't want to be so stubborn and closed-minded that you wouldn't want it and, you know, you just die prematurely. You would want a person to bring you to that. So persuasion is the number one skill that entrepreneurs must have to be successful in any business or, uh, capacity. Number three, your systems matter more than you, okay? It took me a long time to realize this because, again, in my community, I was always taught that you got to work very hard, that hard work is the key to success. So I would always grind it out. I would always pride myself in my work until I realized that the most successful people in this world, although they are hard workers, they place a lot more investment in the systems that back their success rather than their own personal efforts. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. You look at Microsoft, which was founded by Bill Gates. Microsoft was built on a system. As smart as Bill Gates may be, and as hard as he may have worked to get Microsoft to where it is today, somehow Microsoft is still operating even when Bill Gates is not at work. Why? 
because he took more off of himself and put more into the system. You think about McDonald's, one of the most revolutionary restaurants in America. This revolutionized the way that a lot of people do business today. They invested in a system. They had a world-class system that allowed them to be able to produce hamburgers at a lightning pace. While everybody else is getting you fast food, five minutes, 10 minutes, they knew how to get you fast food in 30 seconds, right? So they didn't invest more strictly in, I'm just gonna work harder. I'm just gonna put in more hours. I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna do that. They created systems that did a lot of the work for them more efficiently, more consistently, put in more hours with a lot less room for error. When you place a bigger investment in the systems that are gonna be backing your life rather than yourself, <laughs> where you become the asset, you're gonna start noticing some results, okay? The fourth thing that I wish that I would have known in my 20s is a book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F. OK, now when I'm talking about the book, which I highly recommend um, that all of you guys check out, one of the things that I personally had to learn from that book is how to care about the right thing versus how to care about everything. You know, at its core, I'm going to be honest with you all. I'm a pretty intense person. But I don't know how to turn off my intensity at certain times. I could be intense about everything. <laughs> and some things in this life is just not worth the energy, it's just not worth the time, it's not worth the effort. Um, and when you kind of go through this process where you know you might have a lot of anxiety, you're always caught up in your thoughts, somebody can do something and can get under your skin, you have to have a very strong way of being able to choose what you give your energy to rather than allow everybody else and everything to dictate your happiness to you. You know, if you're at a place in your life right now where you leave your happiness up to somebody else, and their actions, the things they, they say and do decides how happy you will be, you're going to be in a very bad place because nobody's going to care more about you than you, right? You got people that's all over the world calling you about stuff, you know, getting all these interruptions left and right. Everybody's trying to sell you something. At what point will you do what's best for you? See, rather than buying into everybody else's thing, rather than making everybody else's emergency your emergency and following off of everybody else's agenda, you really need to be able to have a sense of mind where you really know how to be able to do what is best for yourself as well as the values that you are striving for in life. I highly recommend that you check out this book the subtle art of not giving a F. In fact, I would wager to say that one of the primary reasons why most people do not accomplish world-class success is because of the fact that they allow themselves to get so consumed in minor things, they never take the time to realize that they could use that exact same energy to get much better results on bigger things, right? So whether you take on a small job or whether you take on a bigger job, you're gonna expend energy. You're gonna spend your day doing something. You're gonna spend your day obsessing about something, thinking about something, worrying about something, talking about something. Your success comes down to what that thing was about. <laughs> That's the reason why Mark Zuckerberg wears the same shirt to work every single day because he doesn't want to spend his life obsessing about, well, what should I wear today to work? He wants to focus on a much bigger problem. You have to make a personal decision to not major in minor things. And that's going to happen by default unless you really know the subtle art of not giving a F.
okay? Last but not least, the fifth thing that I wish I would have known in my 20s is you got to know how and when to plant your seeds based upon the time that you want to reap the benefits. Here's what I'm saying. You know, there's this famous quote that says that if you wanted to plant a tree, the best time to do so was 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. So if you want a tree in your life, and this tree could represent, you know, a, a certain amount of finances, a certain relationship, a certain health, a certain lifestyle, don't start planting the seeds when you already want the tree to already be there. <laughs> That's not the proper time to start planting those seeds. If you want to be uh, making a certain amount of money, you need to have been doing what you were doing 10 years ago to get to where you want to be at today. A lot of us have that all mixed around where um, you take a long time to get going on what you need to get going on. But then when it comes down to the time of you wanting results, that's when you get started on your process. So let's say that you want to have a business, right? And you want to be making $100,000. Well, it's going to take you some time to go from zero to $100,000. If you want to be at $100,000 by tomorrow, that means that you should have been starting your business years ago, right? So don't just start thinking about working towards whatever it is that you want to do in life right at the time where you want to start reaping the results. Start mapping out your life now and say, okay, by age this, I would like to have this. That should mean that I should get going with planting the seeds of this today. OK, because not everything in life is going to happen at the snap of a finger, even if it does happen like that for other people. Some people start businesses and instantly they become a millionaire. They are not the average entrepreneur. Some people, they get into a marriage and they have a family instantly. Right. And then some other people, it takes them more time to be able to build that up. So you can't just go into an endeavor and assume that because of the fact that you start a business today, you're going to be an overnight success tomorrow. You can't do that. You've got to be able to say, if I want to be able to, you know, have this success tomorrow, let's reverse five years ago. I should have been doing this, 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 and this. You obviously can't turn back the hands of time, but what you can do is you can apply this principle to your life now so that for everything that you desire to have within the next 5, 10, 15 to 20 years, instead of waiting until five years from now to get started in a business, you start it right now because you know that you want to have a certain amount of money five years down the line. Instead of waiting until 10 years in to say, now I want to settle down and have this relationship. Well, you start planning for that relationship now 10 years ago because you might not be able to find your perfect soulmate just like that. If you want to plant a tree, the best time to do so was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Stop waiting. Get going right now. All right. So if this has been of value to you, Please like this video, and I want you to comment on this. I want you to pick one of these five things that I discuss in today's video, and I want you to tell me uh, maybe how your life could have been different if you applied the lessons that I shared with you from this topic, right? Based upon the things that we discuss, social influence, the number one skill of entrepreneurs, the system has to be more important than you, getting down to subtle art, timing your seeds. Which one of these things, if you would have really focused on mastering that skill, how would that have changed your life? How would it have made things different from where you are right now? I want you to leave me a comment on that. And for those of you guys 
that are ready to start planting the seeds because you know that you want to be successful in business five years down the line. You know that you want to have a better quality of life, you know, today. I want you now to be able to go to the link that is either below or click the card above. So that way I can show you how to transition out of your nine to five job into a full time business that's going to allow you to be able to make money from home, replace your current income and travel the world. And again, it's just like I said, you know, a lot of skeptical, cynical people will look at a video like this and say, man, you're telling people to quit their jobs. You about to make people homeless. I'm not telling you to quit your job today. When you get into the video that I'm going to give to you, which is going to be a free step-by-step -step walkthrough of this, I'm going to be giving you a full step action plan over the next 18 months that you need to apply to have a successful transition. Okay. It's not going to happen overnight. Rome was not built in a day. Okay. So again, focus on planting your seeds and get started today for the success that you want to have tomorrow. All right. I love you guys. I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.